Elixir is a programming language that looks and feels like Ruby, but works and performs like Erlang. Let's unpack it. Elixir was made by prolific Rubyist Joseph Lim, and that's where its Ruby heritage comes from. So that brings with it a focus on productivity, strong web framework, great tooling, and just an overall very satisfying developer experience. It was built on top of the Erlang virtual machine, also known as the Beam. Now this is a very particular VM. It implements the actor model and that shapes any languages that build on top of it. Now what the Beam brings to the table is that it promises runtime resiliency, consistently low latencies, distributed systems capabilities like coming with clustering out of the box, as well as providing massive concurrency and parallelism, something you're sorely lacking in Python and Ruby, for example. Erlang and the Beam offer a functional programming paradigm, which contrasts them to the object-oriented programming which dominates the industry, and Elixir follows suit and offers the same functional programming approach. If you're hearing about FP, that's usually functional programming, and OOP is object-oriented programming. There are some definite differences there. Uh, I don't think we'll unpack all of the functional programming versus object-oriented programming now, but maybe that's a future topic. Erlang and Ruby are both high-level dynamic languages, and the Beam operates on a fairly high abstraction level itself. Following suit, Elixir is also a high-level dynamic language. Much of Elixir development centers around the Phoenix web framework, which provides most of what you need for common web development tasks. Phoenix also offers some really powerful novel things, such as Phoenix channels, which improves upon the base WebSocket support to offer good tools for doing distributed real-time web applications. And then Phoenix Presence, which uses channels, makes it easy to keep track of multiple connected users without needing to write them all down in a single source of truth. Beyond that, we have LiveView, which allows you to build real-time, interactive, rich UIs without bringing in a separate front-end language like JavaScript to handle all that interactivity. It really pushes forward what you can do with just the server-side programming and some nice framework support. From LiveView, we've seen efforts like LiveWire and HotWire spin out in the PHP space and the Ruby space. And I think LiveView offers more than those do, especially since the runtime supports the use case very, very well, especially with all the concurrency and the statefulness of these types of applications. As for the database, there's Ecto, which is a very competent database layer, which just to begin with, when you define your schemas and you define your queries and your inserts and your updates, it helps you exclude entire categories of security issues just by managing things at compile time and excluding the possibility of major SQL injection attacks at compile time. On top of that, it provides change sets, which is a powerful way of managing validations, both at the application layer and in the database layer and surfacing those to your users and other useful features. Ecto really, really covers the database case quite well. I think it does so with an interesting approach and it provides all of the tools typically associated with an ORM, Object Relational Mapper, in a world without objects. So that covers the mainstream use case, building a web application backed by a database. Whether that's a microservice, a normal sized service, or something with a UI where you might use live view or just server-side rendering. It really covers that ground really, really well. It's a delightful web framework to use for essentially anything. Now, a programming language is only as strong as its ecosystem. So what are the important parts of the Elixir ecosystem? How does it do in tooling, documentation? For tooling, we have the mix build tool, which is the typical starting point. It has generators for starting a new project, pulling in the basic needs for setting something up, managing your dependencies, 
compiling your project. If you're doing Phoenix, that also provides mixed tasks for starting your dev server. And if you're doing Ecto, you get mixed tasks for running migrations or generating schemas. So that's a really, really powerful and convenient tool for doing all of this. And when it comes to dependencies, the community's shared resources, the libraries and the code that's been written is available on hex.pm. So that's uh, the hex package manager and it's uh, associated hex docs, which is the automated documentation for any project that provides documentation, which is pretty much all of them because it's very easy to get started generating documentation for an Elixir library. So Hex is a fantastic resource and the documentation tool, Xdoc, is a, one of the best documentation tools I've had to deal with. And it also reflects in that typical Elixir libraries have very good documentation. I will say that the way that Xdoc works with module documentation has made me a better programmer overall and more inclined to jump from documentation and what it claims to be doing and straight into the code to actually check in detail what is being done. So whenever the documentation is slightly unclear, it's usually fairly easy to find and jump to the code and actually check. And if the code is just Elixir, then you can read it and just understand it and see what it does. That makes for a very nice documentation system. Beyond the web use case, we also have NERVS, which is an IoT and hardware oriented framework, which is a fantastic way of building smart devices or even smart hobbyist devices. And I've live streamed and blogged about NERVS a fair bit. So if you're curious about getting started building IoT things or playing around with Raspberry Pi in a slightly more serious way, I re really recommend checking out NERVS. And pushing ever forward, we have things like Membrane, which is a media streaming framework, which allows you to do things like media pipelines and live streams for many, many different use cases, using Elixir to essentially orchestrate things like FFmpeg and other nitty gritty video and audio media tools. We also have NX, which is an effort to bring machine learning to Elixir. Elixir has already been used in many companies for orchestrating the work done by, for example, Python machine learning project. But now it's starting to look like we can actually do machine learning inside of Elixir in a performant way, which is an immense move forward. And to make that more approachable, the team behind Elixir also started developing Livebook, which is a collaborative code and documentation editing tool if you work with the Jupyter Notebooks in Python, it's similar to that, but also more similar to Google Docs, where you can do multiple users editing it at the same time. And it's probably the best way to approach Elixir today. Talking about a language in isolation doesn't really give much of a feel for what it is. So I think it could be useful to talk about Elixir in contrast to some other languages. Comparison is sort of the death of joy in some cases, but it can also be useful for, for getting a grasp of where it is on different spectrums. In terms of raw speed, Node.js JavaScript on the highly tuned V8 engine is absolutely faster. That speed comes with certain requirements. You have to be very careful about doing CPU bound work in Node.js. You have to yield on the main thread to do I.O. Otherwise, in a typical web application, that will show up as latency. Running on top of the beam, Elixir can do CPU bound work in an infinite loop without dropping latency. You can screw up royally and it keeps ticking. You can throw it a real heavy task and it keeps ticking. You can even do, hear me now, multiple things at the same time. The beam is deeply designed for concurrency. And that really, really shows when you're trying to get the most utilization out of your hardware. It's really using those cores and you can push it very far and still get good performance. In terms of community, Elixir is a small dot compared to the immense fractured masses of the JavaScript ecosystem. It is still a significant community and it's only 
small in relative terms. It is also quite active and pushing ever forward. It is a growing language. I'm not sure it's growing faster than JavaScript isn't growing because that would be a tall order, but it is growing. I see more and more companies adopt it. I rather like a small community because that means that I can learn most of the faces doing work in public, faces and names, and I can keep track of all the major projects and where they are at. And it also means that anything I put effort into for the community also actually matters and has a good chance of making an impact. And I think that's, that's a big advantage of finding a community that is sort of manageable size. And for now, Elixir is that. As for using the language itself, I'd say it feels less loose than JavaScript, less strict and much less verbose than Java, and about as expressive as something like Ruby or Python. There are also some challenges in learning Elixir. If you haven't done a bunch of functional programming, that's sort of a paradigm you need to adapt to. And if you haven't done Erlang or other actor-oriented languages before, that's another paradigm to pick up. And then there's a lot of special sauce in Erlang's OTP, the Open Telecom Platform. It's sort of Erlang's extended standard library, which provides a ton of tools for resiliency, distribution, and similar sort of high, fairly high level topics that are baked into Elixir and Erlang and Beam and really, really provide this powerful platform. But there are sort of thresholds to pass to get to enjoy the fruits of that. You get a lot of it for free when using something like Phoenix. You don't have to learn any of this really upfront. You need to tackle your functional programming at the, at the outset. That's probably the, the first challenging step if you haven't done functional programming before. So Elixir is a fantastic language if you're trying to build web applications and especially if you want to build distributed, scalable web applications. And one of the reasons I found it compelling to begin with was that I had these experiences of trying to build good distributed systems Usually before I really knew what a distributed system was, but in Python and PHP, and the tooling there is lesser and there's less of it than in Elixir and Erlang. Erlang was foundational designed to be a distributed system. The language also seems to work really well for beginners. I personally introduced three inexperienced developers to Elixir and they're productively using it today in my team. So if any of this seems interesting to you, I really suggest checking out the language. If you want more of my thoughts on Elixir, I suggest reading my blog where I've made a number of excited blog posts about it. I'll link a few of those in the description. And if you want to know what I'm doing next, I suggest subscribing to my newsletter where I write about software, tech and assorted topics every week. And until next time, stay curious out there.